Good morning. Oh, wasn't that great? Oh, tuning into the melody of heaven. That was just so good. I, the moments I just like bathed in it and it's great. It's great for Killy and I to be back here. I think the last time I spoke here was about 10 years ago. Doesn't time fly? It really does. Um, but to, Pastors Terry and Juanita, don't they have potential? <laughs> don't they? I mean, don't they? I mean, it's like, I, I want to be like them when I grow up. <laughs> I mean, they just look good, they got energy, and they're just so passionate uh, about our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Well, it is good to be here. Um, and particularly if you're here for the first time visiting, um, we really do hope that you're, you're already enjoying the service um, and that you will be inspired uh, by my little contribution this morning. Killy and I, um, we went to speak at this conference and they put us up in a hotel and uh, we were put up on the 37th floor of the hotel, okay, pretty high. And uh, we, we were about to go to bed when we started to hear some fireworks. And the curtains were already closed, so we opened the curtains and we couldn't believe it. The fireworks were just outside our window. <laughs> Literally, outside our window. Uh, but we were like one floor above the fireworks. So we drew two chairs, pulled them by the window, sat by the window, and we had a 30-minute firework display, and we were able to view them from above. And the perspective was completely different to any other experience that we had had in our lives viewing fireworks. Now, what do we need in life? We need insight, we need foresight, we need oversight. Insight is like looking at something detail, so it's like looking at something through a microscope. Foresight is looking at a distance, but it's like looking through a telescope. Oversight is a bit like being in a helicopter, looking down at where you live. The perspective is very different. What do we need in life? We need insight. We need foresight. We need oversight. What do we need in life? One, insight, foresight, oversight. There'll be a lot more of that, so when you reply, do it with a bit more enthusiasm. <laughs> Okay, insight, foresight. Now, who, who has got insight? Who has got foresight? Who has got oversight? Okay, that's a question, not a rhetorical question. Who? The Only the Lord. Only the Lord. So, and that's why in worship, we are tuning into the melody of heaven. We're tuning into God. Because what do we want? We want to have his insight. We want to have his foresight. We want to have his oversight. And of course, we want to have some hindsight. <laughs> Wouldn't you fancy a bit of that as well? Yeah? It would be very good to have a bit of hindsight, but sometimes, yeah, we've got so many blind spots, haven't we? We've, got, we've all got blind spots. All of us have got blind spots. That's why they're called blind spots. <laughs> because you can't see them, yeah? And, and, and if a human doesn't reveal the high, you know, uh, those blind spots, it'd be great if God will, and God will. He really will. So, what I want us to do this morning is I want us to, I want to encourage you to look in five different directions, okay? Five different directions. You see, if we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. 
That was very good, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. There'll be a lot of good things like that. OK, <laughs> now repeat that after me. If we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Now, what was God's first question to Adam in the beginning of the Bible? What was God's first question to Adam? Apart from the pastors, they can't answer this one. <laughs> right, anyone else? What was God's first question to Adam? Where are you? Yes! You get a free book. <laughs> At the end of the service, go to the bookstore, you can have a free book. Where are you? What was Jesus' first question? Who can answer that one? What was Jesus' first question? Come on, free book. <laughs> Who knows this one? What was Jesus' I I No? <laughs> Any? Huh? You're almost right. I'll let you have a free book. Je Jesus' first question was this. What are you looking for? That was his first question. God's first question, where are you? Jesus' first question, what are you looking for? Okay, so I'm going I'm to ask you those two questions. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Are you hiding? Behind some fig leaves? Where are you? What are you looking for? Free book. Free book? <laughs> All right, I tell you what, because you were bold, although some people would say you're cheeky, but I'm going to take that bold. I'm going to let you have a free book, but no one else can. <laughs> Otherwise, boy. Right, you can have one. Because I did like your cheekiness. Right, so what I want you to do, and I, I want to remind you this morning, is look in, look in five directions. Okay, number one, look up. Number one, look up. up. Look up. The psalmist in Psalm 121 wrote this. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Look up. Look up. Are you feeling a bit kind of down and heavy? Burdened? Don't look down. Look up. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I'm looking up. Have you noticed today? People are with their little mobile phones and they, they walk in the street like this, don't they? How, I can't believe it. How they do it and kind of not looking like this. Now, have you noticed this? this I, I, like, I do people watching. I, I, I actually like going to coffee shops for a little coffee, nice almond croissant, but I like watching people, okay? And I've noticed this. They do this, they do this. Now, when you remove the phone, notice their body posture. <laughs> they all need to see a chiropractor. <laughs> They're like that. They're hunched up. <laughs> Stand up. Look up. Uh, this lady went to see her GP because she was feeling uh, kind of very down, very downcast. And uh, the doctor said to her, look, this is what I want you to do. When you, because the doctor knew that she, from home, she walked to the station to go to work. So she says, right, this is what I want you to do. For four weeks, I want you to walk out of your house, walk to the station. And when you walk to the station, I want you to look at the chimneys of the houses. Okay? And... Just do that. That's my prescription for you. Four weeks, come back and see me. She went back to see the doctor. The doctor says, how are you? She says, I'm amazing. Amazing. You know why? Because she stopped looking down. She started looking up. 
Because she looked up, she could breathe better. She could feel better. I mean, just the physical posture of just looking up. And for us, of course, we're looking up to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And it's a reminder, isn't it? This Lord, who's the maker of heaven and earth, I mean, if he made the whole earth, all the heavens, he's pretty capable, isn't he? He's pretty capable, and it's a reminder that actually when I start looking up rather than looking at focusing on my little problems, I gain, I gain insight, I gain foresight, I gain oversight, and it changes the way I see things. So we read in Psalm 105 verse 4, look to the Lord and his strength Seek his face always. Look to the Lord. Look, look to his strength, because our strength is weak. And we read, those who look to him, in Psalm 34, verse 4, those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Shall I tell you why? Your pastors, Terry and Juanita, why do they look radiant? It's not because they use a product, some kind of product. It's like, wow, you know, Juanita's discovered this product that we've not discovered. That's why she's always looking radiant. I can tell you why those two look radiant because of Psalm 34, verse 4. Those who look to him are radiant. They're always looking to the Lord. They're spending time with the Lord. They're drawing from the Lord. Psalm 16, verse 8. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. You see, most of us are constantly being shaken. We're being stressed. We're being pulled. But when I look to the Lord, I'm not going to be shaken. I'm not going to let anything shake me. I'm not going to let anything make me feel downcast. So look to the Lord. And there's, a, there's quite a lot of pressure in our society, in our world, in our communities not to do that. But I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. Yes. Wouldn't you? Yes. Repeat that after me. I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with the world and be judged by God. Okay, number one, look up. Number one, look up. Correct, look up. I love we're increasing the enthusiasm here. This is good. <laughs> Number two, look in. Number one? Number two? Look in. So we read in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, the Lord doesn't see things the way you see things. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Psalm 139, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me. See if there is any offensive way in me. We were staying at this hotel. Well, we, when we travel, unless we stay with friends, we stay in hotels, of course. And um, we, um, I do like it. And uh, uh, they put us up in this hotel, and I, I kind of, I'm like a little kid when I get into the room. I want to have a look, you know, look at the view, look at the room, and then I go into the bathroom, and I'm so excited if there are two sinks, <laughs> because we've only got one at home, okay? And when there's two sinks, I'm like, yeah, I've got my own sink, you know, it's really great. And... Um, and it's got, you know, and nor- and in this particular hotel, there were two sinks. I was a little happy bunny. And uh, they had a big, big mirror. And, uh, you know, like five times the size of our mirror. And I'm like, wow, you know. But sometimes the big mirror, mm, is, you know, it's a bit too big, really, isn't it? Because you don't want to see everything, do you? And, but then there was this little mirror 
this little mirror and I, you know, I'm like, I open the drawers, have a look what's in, but this mirror, ah, oh, and I poured out the mirror. And as I poured this little mirror out, it was a magnifying mirror and the light came on and I looked at myself, no! <laughs> and and Killy thought I'd slipped in the bathroom. So she comes running in, what's the matter, what's the matter? I said, I've got blackheads, I've got blackheads. <laughs> you see, I, I hadn't seen the blackheads even in the big mirror. The big mirror didn't show the blackheads. I pulled this little mirror out. It was like, I thought my nose was one big blackhead. <laughs> Where did I get this blackhead from? Now, what would it be like if you and I looked into God's mirror. Ooh, ooh. I know, a bit of humming there, eh? A bit of humming there. What would it be like if we looked into God's mirror? At the airport, you've got to put your stuff through an x-ray machine. You've got to go through a machine. What if, what if we went through God's x-ray machine? What would God pick up? What would God pick up in my mind? What would God pick up in my heart what is it he would pick up what would he see he'd see all sorts of things Jesus made eight statements they're known as the Beatitudes and in one of those and the word Beatitude in, in Greek mag, magarios uh, blessed be happy yeah and in one of those it says this blessed are the pure in heart who shall see God. Okay, the word pure in Greek, I'm Greek. Yeah, so don't worry, but now you can say you know a little Greek. <laughs> but the Greek word for pure is, maga, um, is gatharos, gatharos, which literally means no mixed motives. So who are the people? Who are the people that are going to see God? They're the people who have no mixed motives. They're the people who have no agenda. No other agenda, no other motive. They're the people. There's no underlying hidden little thing going on here. I'm looking to the Lord. That's, that's what I'm looking. I'm looking to the Lord. But I know as I look into my heart, I need some cleansing. Do you know when the first Russian astronaut returned from space, first interview, first question, did you see God? And he said, no, I did not. The Soviet Union heralded this as proof that God did not exist. Did you know that? I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Anyway, this professor got up at the university and he said to his students, you see, Astronaut Yuri, he came back. He did not see God. He did not see God. There is no God. And then one student stood up and said, Professor, may I ask a question? Astronaut Yuri, does he have a pure heart? And the professor said, like, what do you mean, does he have a pure heart? And the student said, well, only the pure in heart will see God. <laughs> Only the pure in heart will see God. We look up, we look in. I'll revisit the looking in in a moment. Number three, we look back. Okay, number one, we look. Number two, we look. Number three, we look. We look back. So we read this in John 1 verse 29. John, who is John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one who takes away the sin of the world. I was in London uh, with Killy. We we're driving in London and we traffic lights there. And then there was a white van. It stopped. And I looked out on the side of the van. It said, painters and decorators established in 2014. I said to Killy, they're idiots. They're idiots. Would I use a painter and decorator 
who's had the experience since 2014. I mean, that's not going to help their business, is it? I would put painters and decorators, you know, I wouldn't put established in 2014. That doesn't carry much weight, does it? Now, there's a lovely store in London, department store, Fortnum & Mason. Outside the store, there's a big sign. It says, established in 1707. <laughs> I think they know how to run a department store, <laughs> don't they? They've had a bit of experience, haven't they? OK, but Christianity, established 2,000 years ago, billions of satisfied customers. <laughs> billions. Billions, billions. By the way, if you're one of those customers, stand up if you're satisfied. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Look at that. Eh? That's encouraging. We've got satisfied customers here. Thank you. Please take your seats. When we've got three sons, when, when our um, firstborn son, he was about four, um, he and I went to buy his mum a Mother's Day present. So we're out looking at stores. He's four years of age. We go into one store. As we walk into the store, there's this massive sign, and the sign read, do not touch. All breakages must be purchased. Why didn't I just walk out? I mean, and it's not just I've got a four-year-old son, I know what I'm like. It's almost like because it says do not touch, there's this pull, isn't there? You can feel the pull, you can feel the battle going on. And it's not that you're like deliberately, it's like, it's more like an elbow, isn't it? You just want to prove the point that you can if you wanted to. But, but Michael's only four, you know. It, it, and I saw it from the corner of my eye. He knocked it. And it was like slow motion as this thing just fell to the ground. And I was like, no! And it fell to the floor, push, smashed. The manager came out of nowhere. I mean, it was like, beam me up, Scotty, you know? And the manager just stood there, didn't say a word, pointed to the sign, do not touch. All breakages must be purchased. So I said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He did it. He did it. And I thought, why don't I just walk out? I'll walk out, he can pay for it. Well, I didn't break it, he broke it. He's got to take responsibility. Now, there's no way that four-year-old Michael could pay for the damages. Only his daddy could pay for the damages. There is no way that you and I can pay for the damages. Only our Heavenly Father can pay for the damages. And he did. There's, there's that beautiful uh, picture of the great artist who went back to the very small rural community where he was born and he was brought up. And he's walking around the village stores. There's an antique shop. He looks in the window. <gasps> Cannot believe what he sees. In the window is one of his masterpieces. It was a painting that he had painted years before he was famous. The frame was broken. The picture was scratched and dirty. But it was his. But he couldn't go into the antique shop and say to the owner, that's my painting. Give it back to me. If he wanted it back, he had to buy it back before he could clean it, restore it, reframe it. That's what Jesus did. Jesus Christ died upon a cross, shedding his blood, because by doing that, he was able to buy you back, buy me back. He was able to clean us. He was able to restore us, and he was able to reframe us. That is the good news of the gospel. That is the good news of Christianity, and that's why we, we could spend 20, 25 minutes thanking him for what he did. And so today, 
Hilly and I, we, we gifted you with a little cross. And, and now I, would, you, would you just stand up if you didn't get a cross? If you didn't get a cross. Stand up if you didn't get a cross. Oh, some people didn't get a cross. Right, please, if you don't mind, stay standing. If you're, please stay standing. If you're a couple and you ended up with two crosses, would you donate one of your crosses to one of these people, please? It's, it's called generosity and Christianity. Please donate a cross. If you're a couple and you've got two crosses and you've got a spare cross, just donate one. I, brilliant. I hope everyone's covered. Anyone, did, I think someone at the, two people at the back still need a cross. Anyone want to share? Oh, by the way, I'll give you this cross. Sorry, there's one cross here for somebody in a minute. Yeah, give that to somebody. Make sure, I think we're doing good. I think we've covered, brilliant. Right, I like that. Well, I, I bought those from, they're, they're from Israel and it's beautiful, it's olive wood. I love just the symbolism of the cross. You know, if you have health issues, if you wake up at night, put it beside your bed. If you wake up at night, just take hold of the cross. Sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Hold the cross. Jesus, my healer. Jesus, my redeemer. Jesus, my savior. Hold the cross. The power of the cross. Or just put it in your pocket or carry it in your handbag. The power of the cross of the cross. Before we can see the cross as something done for us, we need to see the cross as something done by us. Our old history ends with the cross and our new history begins with the resurrection. We Number one, we look. Number two, we look. Number three, we look. And number four, we look around. Number four, we look. We look around. And in Matthew 5, verse 14, this is what we read. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So yes, we have sung. Yes, we are fellowshipping. We're digging into God's word. But when we leave... We leave as his witnesses, as his ambassadors. You see, people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. They don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. Now, some people create happiness wherever they go. And some people create happiness whenever they go. I mean, let's be honest, come on, there are, aren't there? I mean, sometimes when they leave, you're like, oh, oh, that's good, isn't it? Oh, dear. Don't be one of these people that creates happiness whenever you go. Be one of these people that creates happiness wherever you go. Be one of those people. There are two reasons today why people are not yet Christians. One, they've never met a Christian. Two, they have met a Christian. (laughs) I mean, they're the two reasons. In other words, you and I can make the difference in someone's life. So... Leave the church today and say, Lord, I'm a channel of your goodness and grace. Help me to make a difference this week. Whatever it means, whatever it is, whether it's to a neighbor, whether it's to an acquaintance, whether it's a random person, what can I do? How can I be a channel of goodness, a channel of grace, a channel 
to touch the lives of others. Do you, you know, do you ever occasionally get a prompting and remember someone you haven't seen for years? Yeah, yeah? doesn't that happen randomly? Yeah. Well, where did that thought come from? Was it just a random thought or was it a God thought? Was it God bringing that person to your attention? I remember once there was, um, I said to Killy, Killy, I really feel God wants me to go and pray for this woman. So Killy goes, well, you better go. And I said, oh, you know, it's an hour there. And then I'll end up spending an hour with her. And then an hour back, that's like three hours. Oh boy, where am I, you know, where am I gonna find three hours to go and do that? Anyway, time passes. And I said to Killy, I really feel I should go and pray for this woman. And Killy goes, well, you better go. I say, yeah, yeah, it's an hour there, an hour, an hour about. I've got, I've got to find three hours. You know, I've got to find like a whole morning or a whole afternoon. I didn't go. A few weeks after that, we listened to the news. Our, our uh, alarm goes off at 5.58. We listened to Tweet for the Day on Radio 4. Six o'clock, get the news headlines. The news came on. The number one news of the day, the woman died. She's on the news. Her name's Amy Winehouse. Okay, and you're thinking, well, how could you have gone to see her? Because she rented my cousin's house. And my cousin said to me, John, whenever you want to go and meet Amy Winehouse, tell me and I'll take you. And I didn't go. Because, like, it's going to take me three hours. I'm not going to, I didn't go. I was so remorseful. I was repentant. And I said to the Lord, I will never do that again. And I can honestly say to you, my wife's here, she, that since that day, any kind of prompting, any kind of quiver in my liver, any kind of anything, I'm doing it. I'm going to go. I don't care if I look like a fool for Christ. I'm going to do it. And I have done. I have done. I've, I think of somebody... I'll contact them, I'll phone them, I'll email them, I'll text them. I feel a prompting, I'll go and do it. I'll just go and do it. And, and I have, and I will continue to do it until I'm promoted to glory. So I'm encouraging you, don't be like me. Now, you know, I didn't go and see her. Did God have a plan too? Did someone else go and see her? You know, it's a challenge, isn't it? So just do it, do it. Number one, look. Number two, number three, look. number four, look around. And number five, look ahead. Number five. And so we read this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal eternal you know the bible says that the length of a good life the length of a good life is three score years and ten okay now three three score years and ten that's 70 years now some of you are thinking goodness i'm older than that <laughs> how does that work okay let's allocate we've got 70 years is the length of a good life Okay, let's allocate 10 years per day of the week, okay? 10 years for Monday, 10 years for Tuesday, 10 years for Wednesday, 10 years for Thursday, 10 years for Friday, 10 years for Saturday, 10 years for Sunday. Okay, let's go through my life. I've already walked through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm Sunday morning. How's your weekend looking? Okay, those of you that are older than 70, sometimes God gives us an extra bank holiday Monday. <laughs> sometimes God gives us an extra bank holiday Tuesday. But I can tell you this, not many people, not many people get an extra Wednesday. But even if you got three score years and ten, and you got an extra Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 100 years, do you realize that 100 years is just a blip 
on the eternal screen. It's just a blip on the eternal screen. That's all it is. So, so it's like, whoa, look ahead and live your life in the light of eternity and prepare yourself for eternity. You know, not many people today have got that hope. A lot of people's hope today is a bit like a hospital gown. You're usually not as well covered as you think you are. <laughs> well, you can hear it sometimes. You hear it in people's voices. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> what do you mean you hope so? This is a done deal. We look forwards. Life without Christ is a hopeless end. But life with Christ is an endless hope. It's an endless hope. I like what Job wrote. You will feel secure because there is hope. So what do we do? Number one, we look. Number two, we look. Number three, we look. Number four, we look. Number five, we look ahead. So I want to encourage you today to leave today saying, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep looking up. I'm going to keep looking in to remain clean. I'm going to keep looking back because it's only the cross that redeems me, saves me, heals me. I'm going to experience all that. And then I'm, I'm going to look around. I'm going to be a channel of this to others. But I'm going to look forwards. So holding all those together, look up, look in, look, look back, look around, look forward. I'm going to hold all those together. Go as far as you can see and see how far you can go. Go as far as you can see. You see, that's the, that's the thing, isn't it? Because it's like, well, how far? I can, oh, I can see right up to there. But when I go up there, I can see further. <laughs> go as far as you can see and then see how far you can go. That's my encouragement to you today. Go as far as you can see. And then see how far you can go. Press on. Move on. Become bigger, better for the Lord. Look up. Look in. Look back. Look around. Look forwards. If you haven't begun this journey yet, and you find yourself here today, what can I say to you? There are four words that kind of crystallize what the journey of faith is. And the four words are admit, commit, submit, transmit. Number one, admit. Number two, commit. Number three, submit. Number four, transmit. They're the four words that kind of sum up the journey of faith. Admit. We have to admit that our hearts are dirty, our minds are dirty, our lives are dirty. We have to admit that the only thing that can cleanse us and heal us and save us is the blood of Jesus. There's nothing else. So it's like an admission. I admit, I admit, I admit only you, Jesus. But you don't just stay there. You don't just like, oh, yeah, oh Lord, I'm such a sinner, I'm such a sinner, I'm such a sinner. I mean, you stay down there. It's like, well, that's, no, that's no good, is it? You've got to commit You've got to commit. You've got to make a commitment. 
I mean, when Killy and I got married, 23rd of July, 1983, what did the minister say? The minister said to me, will you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife? I mean, what, what would he have said if I said to him, well, I've been thinking about it, actually. <laughs> That's not an appropriate response, is it? Will you? And I go, well, I get very excited, actually. <laughs> Well, he's not really interested in that at that moment in time. He's asking me, am I going to commit? Yes, I commit. I commit. It's a commitment. I do commit myself to you, Lord. I do commit myself to you. Okay? But don't just stay there. It's, you've got to submit. In other words, you've got to, Lord, I am committed to you but I'm submitting to you and I think there are people in in England who who are committed to Jesus oh yes 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 Jesus are you submitted in other words are you coming under his sovereign reign and rule there was this um, man called Zundendorf Count Zundendorf and he was brought up as a Christian, but he rejected the faith. And um, he got into wine, women, and song. He went on a tour of Europe with his entourage. He goes into an art gallery, and he saw uh, a painting of Jesus being crucified. And he knew the story, of course, but he'd rejected it. But something through the art convicted him. And he knelt down on the floor, repentant. Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I've squandered my life, my money. I've, I've squandered it. And he, and he committed himself and recommitted himself to Jesus. Now, when he was standing up, he didn't notice this. It was at the bottom of the painting. He didn't notice it. But when he's on the floor... And he opens his eyes. At the bottom, it said this. I have done this for you. What have you done for me? And he got up and he said something to the effect of, watch what I'm going to do. And he started a church. And that church, he, they, they sent out 12,000 missionaries from one church all across the world. That was the church the people from that church are the people that spoke to John Wesley. And John Wesley, even though he was a clergyman, didn't realise he wasn't a Christian. He was a clergyman and wasn't a Christian. And it was that church that opened John Wesley's eyes. And then John Wesley went to London and to hear a talk, <laughs> met Jesus. I've done this for you. What have you done for me? It's like saying, Lord, I don't want to just be committed. I want to be submitted to your plans, your purposes. I just want to do your will, whatever that is. And then admit, commit, submit, transmit. Transmit. Be a channel of that to others. So look, if you've not begun this journey, or maybe you did, but you've kind of gone off on a diversion, look, why don't you this morning say, hey, I want to reaffirm my faith. I want to recommit my faith. Or I want to begin this journey again. I want to begin this journey for the first time. I want to admit, commit, submit, transmit. So what I'm going to suggest we do, we'll close our eyes for a moment, have a moment of quiet reflection. If you want to say, yes, I either want to begin the journey again, or I want to reaff uh, you know, reaffirm my faith, or I want to start the journey, all I'm going to ask you to do, all I'm going to ask you to do is to stand up, that's all. I want you to express it with your will. It's like the two people getting married. The minister doesn't say, oh, well, we've got two people getting married today, but we don't know where they are. <laughs> There's somewhere out there. No, 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 no. There's no embarrassment. We're standing to say, I'm taking a stand. 
And I want you to stand up in here. Because if you can't stand up here in a church, you'll never be able to stand up outside. So I want you to stand up in here today so that tomorrow you're able to stand up outside. And then when you're standing, I'll pray a prayer. I'll ask you to pray a prayer. Then I'll say a prayer for you. Just close your eyes for a moment. Ponder what you've heard today. For many of us, we're we're saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to be more intentional in looking up looking in, looking back, looking around, looking forward. But for some of us today, it may be a new beginning. Maybe for the first time, maybe as a way of coming back or reaffirming our faith. And if you feel, yes, this will be a good thing to do today, I want to reaffirm my faith or start the journey Would you just stand up? Please stand up now. Just stand up, if that's you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Anyone else want to stand up? Please take... Don't don't miss this opportunity. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, anyone else? And then we're going to... Anyone else? Okay. Now, those of you um, who are seated... Okay, I want you to do something. Stand up. Stand up. Okay, look what just happened symbolically. When the when the people stood up, first of all, it felt slightly lonely. Because it's like you're standing up and you're, oh dear, I'm standing up. But look what's just happened. We're all saying, we're standing with you. You're not standing alone. We are standing with you. And we're going to encourage you and we're going to support you and we're going to help you. So I'm going to pray a prayer. I will pray this prayer phrase by phrase. Those of you that stood up, I really want you to pray that prayer. But then all of us can pray the prayer as a way of reaffirming our faith. Here's the prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I bow before you now. Together. Lord Jesus Christ, I bow before you now. I come just as I am. I come just as I am. I know I have done many things wrong. I know I have done many things wrong. And I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Cleanse my life. Cleanse my life. Set me free from the past. Set me free from the past. I invite you into my life now. I invite you into my life now. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Come in by your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power and your presence. Fill me with your power and your presence. Help me from this day on to build my life on you. Help me from this day on to build my life on you. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen. A prayer for you. Stay standing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce and I pronounce his forgiveness. May you know his cleansing. May you know his presence, his power, his peace. We pray for all of us to know his protection. And as we walk out of this church community, that you will empower us. As we intentionally choose to look up, to look in, to look back, to look around and to look forward that you will honour our efforts to remain faithful. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please take your seats. The Jesus that we have sung about, the Jesus that we've spoken about, 
is the saviour, is the king, he is the great physician. If you have a health concern of any kind, or, or someone you love has a health concern, but they're not here, put your hand on your heart now. This is either to represent yourself or to represent someone else. Lord Jesus, we're asking you now, as the great physician, release your healing power. Where there is infection, disease, sickness, we pray that you will flush it out of our bodies and the bodies of those that we're representing. Where there has been any kind of degeneration, we pray now for regeneration and restoration. We speak health and wholeness and well-being in body, in mind and spirit. Lord, we pray in these, this week, these days, you'll give us a tangible sign of your healing. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. 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 Um, in a moment, I'll hand back to Terry and to Juanita, and because uh, we, we, the church wants to give you a pack, and in this pack there's a little booklet, um, but Terry and Juanita can explain that to you, and, um, and we would love to pray for you, and they'll explain that to you. I, I think it's always good. You know sometimes when you fill in a very important document, Sometimes you have to get it countersigned, don't you? And, and I sometimes feel getting someone else to pray for you is a little bit like that. You've, you've signed and someone else is saying, I'm going to countersign what you signed and I'm going to like ink it in. And there's great power in that. So um, when Pastor Terry and Juanita tell you about that, it, um, do, do take the opportunity to let someone pray over you and for you, uh, particularly if, if you stood up uh, in the first call to stand up or you need prayer for anything. Um, Killy and I uh, brought some uh, resources which uh, I'll very briefly mention them to you. Um, I write a weekly article called Heroes of the Faith and I just tell the story of one of the, the cloud of witnesses um, it's only a thousand words and you can either read it or you can listen to Killy um, audio um, and if you want to sign up for that just go to canonjjohn.com front page sign up you'll get that 8 a.m. every Saturday and it will give you a faith lift um, we brought you a couple of uh, the books I brought during lockdown I wrote this book uh, will I be fat in heaven and um, it's actually a serious question <laughs> You know, what will I look like in heaven? Uh, and I took 38 questions. People say to me, how long did it take you to write? Well, I think it took me 42 years because uh, I've, I've been thinking about these 38 questions for four decades. Um, you know, what happens when babies die? Why do bad things happen to good people? Do all religions lead to God? You know, and, I, and this is a book not just for Christians, to understand how to answer these questions, but also a book to give to people who are not yet believers. When the book came out, the day it came out, the first copy I got, I went straight to my dentist. And uh, because he and I have been talking for now, how many years, 20, 26 years. And, um, and I gave him the book and he looked at the index and he goes, I'm gonna read that question tonight. And that, that was, do all religions lead to God? Um, and it's interesting, what's the answer to that question? Do all religions lead to God? No, but why? Because only one faith teaches that, Christianity. So you're not putting any other religion down, you're just telling the truth. So sometimes this might equip and help a Christian understand how to answer these questions, okay? But then I also asked um, 10 children to send me all their questions, and then I answered their questions. Were there dinosaurs on the ark? And all those sorts of questions. Um, and that's called, that's a good question. And it's ideal for children. 
Um, this is how can I pray for much younger children um, under fives. Um, and then top 10 books that we should all read while we're on earth, okay? The top 10. One of the top 10 I personally would recommend is called Pilgrim's Progress. Okay, it's like a, it's a classic. I mean, what I mean is the top 10 classic books that I think we should at least read once, okay? Now, it's, it, the language is quite old and it's massive, so I, I rewrote it. And um, I, well, I basically, I basically paraphrase Pilgrim's Progress into a language and an accessible version. And it really is a powerful story, okay? Now, these books, buy two, get one free. I mean, if Boots can do it, we can do it. <laughs> okay, so I mean, if you want, you can get th three of those, but only pay for two, and then you've got two to give away. Or you can have one each or whatever, doesn't matter. But this one is just one pound. Just one pound, yeah? If you don't have a pound, just nick it. And uh, <laughs> listen, listen, if you don't have a pound, we'll give it to you. You know, but if you come up to Killy and say, I don't have a pound, God knows if you're lying. <laughs> Listen, I really hope um, you've been inspired today. I hope you've been encouraged. Um, and again, thank you, Terry and Juanita, for having me here. And then I'll leave that to that. <laughs>